Hi, my name is Kirsten Jacobson, and today we're going to tour the Earth ship that I built in Taos, New Mexico. In this tour, we visit the largest Earthship community in the world, which is located in Taos, New Mexico. Also home to Earthship Biotexture, an eco-construction company created by Michael Reynolds. Michael Reynolds created the concept of the Earthship, which is a completely off-grid and self-sufficient home built using local, reclaimed, and natural materials. Furthermore, he worked with local governments to pass the Sustainable Development Testing Site Act in New Mexico, which allowed lands to be set aside for testing and development of experimental sustainable buildings. If you'd like to learn more about this, you can watch the 2007 documentary, The Garbage Warrior. While some aspects of these structures are not entirely natural, they do incorporate a combination of natural and waste materials into purposeful, durable, and efficient structures, which I believe are worth exploring. Our host of today's tour, Kirsten Jacobson, worked for Earthship Biotexture for over 25 years and co-founded the Earthship Academy, which has been attended by over 2,000 students from 80 different countries. We will be touring her Earthship, which she started building in 1998, which is now a nightly rental on Airbnb and has been featured in Forbes, the Smithsonian, and Airbnb magazine. Now let's check in with Kirsten and get into the tour. Earthships are known for their distinctive appearance, which is earth bermed on three sides, the north, the east and the west, and then a huge wall of windows on the south side. These windows allow the sun to penetrate into the building, heat the mass of the walls and the floors in the wintertime. Then when the temperature in the room drops below the temperature in the walls, heat is released into the space via thermodynamics. So these buildings are able to heat themselves in the winter. Then in the summer, very little sun is allowed into the building and the mass of the earth around you on all sides helps cool the space and you don't need heating and you don't need air conditioning. So this house, like all the homes in this community, is totally off the grid. Not only does it heat and cool itself, but it generates all its own electricity with solar panels and a battery bank. It harvests all its own water, which it filters. We'll look at the water filtration system inside. You use that water for bathing, cooking, or dishes. Then that water flows into interior planters that grow these beautiful jungles inside the building. The plants also aerate, treat, and clean up the water enough for you to be able to flush the toilet with it. Then that water grows outside, goes outside to water the plants. So we're using all the water four times. So when I started building this house, I had a flat spot where I laid used automobile tires out and I filled them and compacted them with earth. You hand compact these tires with a sledgehammer. It's somewhat labor intensive, but you're basically making a thermal mass brick. The bricks are staggered like regular bricks would be and packed out with mud and then plastered with mud. So you have your massive tire walls, then you build your front face, which is where your south facing glass is. Then you put the roof structure, insulate the roof, put a surface on top of the roof to catch clean water, install your cisterns, install your solar panels, hook up all the systems, and finish the house. So here we are in the main space that's the kitchen, living, dining area. It's got these vertical windows that kind of curve out and around. I made that choice even with the knowledge that doing the curve on the front of the building was going to be time consumptive, uh, use more materials, be more expensive, and take more detailing. But I love the aesthetic and I love how it embraces the mountains and the mesa and has this beautiful view. I have very high ceilings. These ceilings are about 14 feet high. When you want to cool a house like this beyond the natural temperature of the earth, you can add natural ventilation. This house has several operable skylights and vent boxes throughout that help vent air through the building. I've got two of them in this room. And this one I can operate with my little hook here through this ring and it goes down through the cam cleat, closes right up. If I want to open it, pull it open, open as much or as little as, as I want it and latch it. So you don't see a lot of square shapes in Earthships. The materials themselves lend themselves to these kind of curvaceous and flowing shapes. You've got the round tires, cans, bottles, and then the plaster is 
able to be formed in kind of any shape you want. So you get a lot of arches, domes, vaults, uh, roundish walls, not a lot of square boxes, which is an aesthetic that I like. Most of the walls inside the house are plastered with adobe, which is a mixture of dirt, sand, straw, and water. Luckily, we live in an area where adobe is an indigenous historic building material. We have Taos Pueblo here. We have a lot of local architecture made with this beautiful natural material. And here is the dome that was my original structure that I built and lived in for the first six years of building this house. And then I built out into this main space and then I continued on building to the west. So as I mentioned, this house is totally off the grid. So all my electricity is from the solar panels on the roof. There's a battery bank, and then there's all the components that control the power system. So we have the charge controller and the AC and DC load circuits. All the water in the house is filtered rainwater. So it's harvested, harvested from the roof, stored in cisterns, filtered, and then pumped to the fixtures within the house. So the first use of the water is any of the water coming out of the sinks or the shower. Then, well, actually, <laughs> the sink water to code goes directly to the septic system. It's considered to be black water, where the bathroom sink and bathroom shower are gray water and they go to the interior botanical cells. There's a filtration system that we have that we'll look at and there's an additional filter for drinking water. So it goes through a series of particle filters for all household use, and then one more ceramic bacteria filter to provide drinking water. So this is also a rammed earth tire wall that's supporting the window framing here. We laid the tires in kind of a semicircle on the ground and pounded them up. This is about four layers of tires in height and then packed out and plastered. Tires are great to work with because they're the perfect form for a rammed earth brick. And when you build a building like this, you don't need a concrete foundation. The tires themselves are wider than the required foundation. So you can just start with a layer of tires, ram them and keep going up from there, which is fantastic saving on concrete and saving money as well. They also create these very strong walls that can support the weight of the roof. They're load bearing, resilient, earthquake proof, pest proof, fireproof, and super strong. Walking west towards the bathroom and bedroom area, you see the gray water planter here. This planter is taking the used water from the bathroom shower and sink, and it's growing plants with it. The plants are filter filtering and treating the water and cleaning it up enough that we can flush the toilet with that water. So there's a pump panel at the end of the planter that takes the stored treated gray water and pumps it to the toilet tank for the next flush. So this is my round bathroom that's made out of bottle bricks that are used bottles cut in half with the ends taped together to form a brick of uniform size. We cut 2,400 bottles to do this and taped the ends together. So there's 1,200 bottle bricks. The bottom of the wall is aluminum cans laid in cement and then everything is plastered with gypsum plaster on the outside. So here's the bedroom. It's a typical U module in Earthship terminology, which is this U rounded shape of the tire walls. The curved wall in the back is stronger than a straight wall for receiving the weight of the berm buried behind the building. And then you see the shelf here is the earth cliff. That's the original level of the earth on this site. And we dug down, laid out the tires, put the earth behind, pounded the tires, and then firmed up around the back of the house. So one of my favorite features of this house is the skylight in the bedroom. It's operable and it's above the head of the bed and it provides a ton of beautiful natural light, but also amazing ventilation. On a warm summer night, you open the skylight and this beautiful cold air drops down on you and it just feels amazing. One of the most important design decisions I made when I built the house was to keep the spaces really open. There's no door or separation between the bedroom and the rest of the main space and the house kind of just flows and has a nice open energy to it. Living off the grid has given me a sense of strength and independence that I never had when I was on the grid. And unfortunately, I feel like I'm kind of in on a secret and I want everyone to know about it, that this is a way people can live that doesn't have to be hippie or crunchy or granola. These are real systems, real solutions for families, for professionals, 
for anybody really. This is just common sense, a way to live where you take care of your own needs yourself on site, you treat your own garbage and waste on site, you repurpose materials when you can, and you just connect more with nature and all the resources we have around us and live in a state of abundance instead of scarcity. So we started Eco Build Lab because we recognize that Earthships, while completely amazing, still represent only a tiny fraction of the built environment. We wanna bring these ideas into the broader spectrum of the conversation and incorporate every possible building envelope, helping people decide what's right for them, what's right for their climate, their budget, their lifestyle, their permitting situation. Earthships are great, but there's other options as well. So EcoBuild Lab is presenting kind of a a la carte menu of building solutions, power systems, water systems, toilet solutions, and you can kind of pick and choose and build from these pieces what's gonna work best for you. You can check us out at ecobuildlab.com and our first course is Off Grid Jumpstart where you can learn about all the systems that can take you off the grid and determine if this way of living is right for you. We're also writing a book called Going Off the Grid, a beginner's guide for people that don't wanna to move to the middle of nowhere and poop in a bucket.